Welcome back. As I promised in my previous video, today we will be looking at what is the definition of leadership. Before we can explain how to provide great leadership to our teams, we have to agree on what is the definition of leadership. There have been many years, many pages and many volumes of research on leadership and what is the exact definition of leadership and how do we define it. Yet today, as we are here today, the exact definition is still not agreed and the exact definition still evades us. For many years there has been no clear definition of leadership, but generally it is agreed that leadership is the effort made by a leader to influence and move his team members towards the accomplishment of a common agreed objective. Uh, you heard I used the word influence. This is central to the discussion of leadership and it will become more apparent in the rest of my video that I'm doing about what is the relevance of influence. But in short, it's about motivation, influence and leadership. Among other renowned contributors to the leadership discussion and research, we have people like Geert Hofstede, Bernard Bass, Blunt, Jones, Fry, Vitucci, the list is virtually endless. It's, it's hundreds of renowned researchers that have made contributors contributions to what defines leadership. Yet today we are still without an exact definition apart from the general definition that I just gave you two seconds ago. The fact that there is not a concise agreement on the definition of leadership and what determines leadership does not however mean that we should ignore the history and the research that has been done up to this point where we are today. We have to apply the evidence that has been gathered up to this point and what we know about leadership to further develop and improve our leadership practices that we enact today. This, that is how science works. It is not all discovered at once, but rather through an iterative and repetitive process. Theories and concepts are refined until we reach a point where we can confidently say what is the cause and effect relationship determining a scientific principle or construct and thereby defining such a construct. It is generally accepted that leadership can be taught or at least some leadership skills can be taught. That means that what we know currently about leadership can be put into practice, we can use it to train other leaders to improve general leadership skills. Even if we do not know it all as of today, we do not have the complete answer today. That does not mean that we should negate what we've learned up to this point. However, if it was that simple, we should be able to just groom and train a whole set of new great leaders, or at least effective leaders, if not efficient. However, it is not that simple. Research has determined that leadership is not a one-dimensional construct, and there are many determinants of what is a great leader. The position that leadership can be taught needs to be tempered with a perspective questioning whether leadership is not perhaps rather a direct function of a person's personality traits, of the leader's personality traits, his characteristics. In other words, leadership success may be an innate function of that person's personality characteristics. Research, however, has made it clear that personality traits and characteristics do indeed play a role in being a great leader. However, notwithstanding that, there is a very big component to leadership that is something that can be learned or taught in order to improve somebody's leadership skills. So even if you were not born as a great leader, uh, there's, a, there's a leadership theory called the great man theory, which means or which postulated that great leaders are born. Yes, great leaders are perhaps born, but they also learn specific leadership skills and that help them to become great leaders. Therefore, as I said, leadership is not a one-dimensional construct. 
It's a multi-dimensional construct. It's part of. It's made up of your personality characteristics, your personal traits, and some information that you've learned or some information that you've been taught. Let's try and shine some light on this discussion by using an example. If your personality is such that you simply do not like interacting with people, it will in all cases be difficult for you to become a great leader. <coughs> Sorry. You may be an effective leader. You know what to do as a leader. But because you lack the personality skills to interact efficiently with people, you're going to struggle to become a great leader. No matter how much you learn about leadership, there are some personality traits that you need to be a great leader. You may become an effective leader, but you will have to really work hard to become a great leader. I'm sure you understand the distinction between an effective and an efficient and a great leader. An effective leader is somebody that does everything that the leader should do. An efficient leader is somebody that does everything he has to do as a leader and he does it the right way, he does it very well. A great leader is somebody that inspires his followers to achieve more than they thought themselves they could achieve. Later in this discussion, we will look at different leadership theories and their perspectives on what exactly determines what characteristics a great leader should have and what exactly it is that he or she should be doing. I did say we will look at a number of theories. As I said earlier in this, in this presentation, there were, there's been much research on the issue of leadership, on the construct leadership, and people have varying opinions. And that's why I'm saying we will look at different theories, different opinions of what great leaders should be doing. An added complexity to the whole issue of leadership is that what one person regards as being a great leader, somebody that he or she will follow without question, may not be the same as the opinion of the next team member. The next team member may have a different opinion of what he or she regards as being a great leader that he or she will follow. And this is part of the dilemma that we as leaders have to deal with. We have to understand that different team members have different opinions of what constitutes a great leader and when they will follow us or not. One person prefers that a leader behaves in a certain way. Another person pre prefers that the leader behaves in a different way. And this difference in preferences is what motivates them towards the achievement of that common objective that we spoke earlier about in our general definition of leadership. We will explore this concept further later in this discussion when we look at leadership theories and specifically at the implicit leadership theory. The implicit leadership theory, in specific, states that each follower of a leader has his own opinion or her own opinion of what constitutes a great leader. Be that as it may, an example is appropriate at this time. One person prefers that a leader continuously tells him or her how good they are doing and what fantastic worker he or she is. This is the so-called extrinsically motivated individuals. They like people to tell them how good they are and how well they are doing. They need to have affirmation of what they are doing from outside of themselves, extrinsically motivated. Another person does not like this and prefers that a leader simply sets the objective and then leaves him or her to achieve that object objective. Achievement of that objective in itself is enough praise for them. These people are intrinsically motivated. Again, another added complexity to leadership. We as leaders, we have to cater for these different types of motivation, motivational requirements of our various team members. Being a great leader is not simple. All these different factors need to be considered when a leader speaks and when he behaves. The difficulty for a leader 
is that he or she has to understand what motivates each of his or her followers. And they have to cater for that. The leader has to allow for that in his strategy to motivate the team. In my first video, I alluded to the universality of cultural differences. Different kinds of cultures and the influence of culture on personal motivation of followers. I also emphasized the fact that culture does not only relate to national culture. There's personal culture, there's corporate culture and there's national culture. And all of these determines what motivates me as an individual and what motivates each of your team members. What motivates every individual person is different from person to person. Even if similar comments, actions and behavior by the leader motivates more than one person at a time, in which case you are lucky as a leader by the way, then it is very likely, if not assured, that the level of motivation will be different from one individual to the next. Therefore, by using that common approach you cannot expect to achieve the same level of motivation and achievement from each of your team members. Later in this course, we will look at different theories of motivation which attempt to explain what motivates different people. I urge you to keep an eye out for my full set of discussions and videos and lectures on the efficient leadership and specifically efficient cross-cultural leadership. Soon I will be releasing my full course on the Udemy online learning platform and you can also find it there. Here I will be going into the details of what exactly it is that a leader needs to know and consider in order for him or her to become a great leader. Up till now we've discussed some concepts in general but we've not gone into any specific details. In this course we will be considering culture motivation, influence, cultural intelligence, leadership theories and styles and how a leader can use these to craft an efficient and a great proactive or reactive action strategy to motivate his team members. In the meantime, practice to be culturally sensitive, treat people as individuals and start on the road to becoming great leaders.